Here's probably one of the toughest types of questions my students have to answer, but once they see it once, they'll be ready on the test for it. Let's see if you are too. I got a compound. It's got carbon and hydrogen in it, and I don't know what the formula is. All I know is this, that when I take that compound, which I'm going to abbreviate in terms of a formula, CXHY, I don't know what the formula is, but I know that the compound's got carbon and hydrogen in it. When I combust it, it forms carbon dioxide and water. Now, the question will say that um, you have to take for granted that all of the carbon in the combustion of this hydrocarbon here gets found in the carbon dioxide in the end and all of the hydrogen gets found in the water. And you're going to be given masses, like I got 2.63 grams of that chemical undergoing combustion and it forms this mass of carbon dioxide and 4.3 grams of water. From that information, you're supposed to be able to determine the empirical formula of that compound. How do you do that, hey? Okay, look. You don't have ratios for balancing because you don't know what these numbers are. So how will you actually do this? Well, it takes into account what you can remember about mass percents. And really, quite simply, I always say simply, but the thing is, if you just break it down a little bit and think about it, you can get this. You recognize that 7.87 grams of CO2, you are told that in that mass there of CO2, all the carbon from the combustion of this chemical is found there. And that means this, that if you have 7.87 grams of CO2, if you can find the grams of the carbon that's in here, that's how much is in there. Now that just tells you the grams of it, it doesn't tell you the moles or the ratio, but you can find that. 7.87 grams of CO2 times. Now what is it? How are you going to find the grams of carbon? Think about what you want and what you don't want. You don't want the grams of CO2. What do you want? You'd really like to know the grams of carbon. And is it not true that in this molar mass, which is 44.01 grams, that there's 12.01 grams of carbon in that total molar mass. It's good, hey? So now, what does that equal? Well, when you do this math here, that's going to equal, uh, I will tell you what it's going to equal. It's going to equal uh, 2.15, 2.15 grams of carbon. Now, what have you got? you got the mass of carbon that's in that carbon dioxide right there. That's how much carbon is in that mass there. But that's also how much carbon is here as well. So of this compound here, 2.15 grams of it is carbon. You can do this cal calculation again for finding the mass of hydrogen that's in here by multiplying this by 1.01 .01 over 18.02. Or you can just say, well, look. If that's the grams of the carbon that's here, the grams of the hydrogen is going to be the difference in those two numbers, 0 decimal 4, 8 grams of hydrogen. Great. Now what have you got? You know the grams of the carbon and the grams of the hydrogen that are found here. How do you find the empirical formula? Take the masses that you've got. So it's 2.15 grams of carbon. You don't want grams of carbon, you want moles of carbon. You take the 0 decimal 48 grams of hydrogen. You don't want grams of hydrogen. You want moles of hydrogen. What are the molar masses here? 12.01 grams per mole and 1.01 grams per one mole. And what are you going to get when you do that math right there? When you divide 2.15 uh, by 12.01, you get 0 decimal 179. We'll just keep a bunch of digits till the end, moles of carbon, and you get 0 decimal 475 moles of hydrogen. So remember, you turn grams into moles. What do you do for empirical formula then? Take the smallest mole quantity and divide it into each number. Now when you take this number of moles of carbon and divide it into itself, that you get one carbon, that's this number divided by itself, and then if you take this number and divide it into here, the smallest into each one, you're going to get, when you do that, 
a ratio of C, there's going to be one C, and there's going to be two point, and no kidding, you calculate they're going to say this, six, seven moles of hydrogen. Well, that's not an empirical formula. But what did I tell you to do when you see a 0.67? That's a two and two thirds. So it's a third ratio. So when you see the 0.67, multiply everything here by three. And what are you going to get? C, three, H, that number times 3 is 8. That is the empirical formula, C3H8. And as a matter of fact, it very much is likely going to be the molecular formula for a chemical called propane. So that's how you do a combustion analysis type of question in order to determine an empirical formula.